Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you are joining us online, uh, I'm kind of a little bit lost here, but if you're joining us online and if you have questions, please use the questions panel on the GoToWebinar. I'll answer to those questions and questions from the audience at the end of the talk. So before I begin, I just want to thank you everybody for being here today. And I also want to thank a bunch of people that's in this room because uh, although this is my PhD product, project, uh, wouldn't be possible without the help of a bunch of people in this room. So thank you very much. I know this study was really intense. And actually, I think all my five years here were really intense. So thank you very much. Uh, so today I'll be sharing a little bit of my PhD research, differences in selenium and copper metabolism between Brahma and Angus cattle. So in this presentation, I'll give a little overview of the importance of selenium and copper. Then I'll uh, talk a little bit about of the literature that has been published uh, about the differences in metabolism of copper and selenium cattle. And then I'll jump in the results of my research. So beginning with selenium, let me just use the pointer here. So beginning with selenium, we know selenium is an important trace mineral. That's uh, it's a powerful antioxidant that's uh, responsible for a bunch of functions in the body. And the deficiency of selenium can lead to many problems as low fertility, retained placenta, decreased immunity, also decreased activity of the thyroid hormones because selenium is responsible for the uh, activation and production of thyroid hormones. But I believe that one of the most common uh, diagnoses or symptoms of selenium deficiency is the white muscle disease or the uh, weak calf syndrome. So when we have selenium deficiency, when a calf has very low levels of selenium in the body, we're gonna see white muscle disease as we see this calf laying down here. Usually those calves that have white muscle disease they lack of vigor, they cannot stand, and they cannot nurse. It usually happens right after birth. And what's going on during selenium, this problem, white muscle disease, is that the antioxidant levels are so low because selenium concentration is so low that uh, there's a lot of tissue damage going on because free radicals are not removed from the tissue. And because of that, we start having a lot of accumulation of calcium in that muscle. And then as we can see here, this uh, picture of a heart. Uh, okay, so, and this uh, will, if not treat, will eventually lead to death. So moving to copper, copper is also a trace element, um, really essential for the body for many functions, is required for more than 30 enzymes and is related to reproduction, immunity, and growth. So if we have copper deficiency, all those functions can be affected. And I personally think that one easy way to diagnose or to characterize copper deficiency is actually the hair color change. So if we look at this cow here, it's the same cow in both pictures. In picture A, the cow is under copper deficiency, and we see that all the black hair it's kind of orange, kind of brown. And then when she's treated with copper, the colors come back to black. And this happens because uh, there's this enzyme called, called tyro tyrosinase that is a copper containing enzyme that's responsible for the catalyzation of melanin. And melanin is what gives us color to the hair and the skin. So in copper deficiency, the uh, levels of tyrosine get low, which decreases the levels of melanin, then we see this color change. But this is only in very severe cases of copper deficiency. And most likely when we see color changes in cattle in the grazing situation is more because of uh, seasonal changes than the actual copper deficiency. But this is also uh, something we might, might see in copper deficiency. So copper and selenium are among the most commonly found micromineral deficiencies for grazing cattle around the world. Especially in Florida, uh, copper and selenium concentration in the soil are really, really low. 
And on top of that, there's two things that make these concentrations, these low concentrations to be a bigger problem. Uh, selenium is not required for plants. Sulfur is required for plants and they actually share the same pathway for uptake. So since selenium is not required, plants will only uptake sulfur. So that's why when we look at the forges, uh, concentration in the soil is low, concentration in the forge is gonna be low too. Uh, and then for copper, copper is required for plants, but is really low in the soil here in Florida. And on top of that, it is strongly bound to organic matter, matter in the soil. So it won't be as available for plant as we would expect it to be. So the low concentration in the soil is reflecting the uh, concentration of the forges. So just to illustrate a little bit, here's a map of the copper concentration in the soil. And here I have highlighted uh, Florida. So as we can see, cons low concentrations are represented by the clear colors and high concentrations are represented by the darker colors. And of course, as we can see here, most of the counties in Florida have low copper concentrations, except for a few regions that have a little bit higher concentrations. And I, here we also have for selenium concentration, the soil, similar pattern, um, darker colors, we have clear colors, we have low concentration, darker colors, greater concentration. As we can see throughout the Florida, we have lower concentrations of selenium in the soil, except for here around Lake Okeechobee, it's just a different type of soil, more organic matter. So we do have more selenium in these regions, but the majority of the state will be selenium deficient. And as I said, the concentration in the soil will reflect in the forge. So here I have this um, data forge analysis of three farms in the state. So location A is here in Hardy County, location B it's Highland counties and location C is the Osceola County. And this is basically looking at the mineral concentration of those forces on this determinate locations. So I have highlighted here selenium. So our grand average for those three locations is 0 0.07, then for which is low. Then for copper, our average is 0 0.25 parts per million, which is also low. And I also have highlighted here sulfur, which is 0.32% which is high. So this is a very good overview of what we will see throughout Florida, low selenium, low copper, high sulfur. Uh, and how do I know which is low, which is high, right? So how can I make this call, what is what? So when I'm talking about if a mineral is high or low, I'm referring to the cattle requirement. So here in this table, I have the cattle, the latest cattle requirement was published in 2016. So is the cattle requirement for macro and micro minerals. And this is the best tool we have to predict, quantify and estimate what the cattle should be eating. Uh, and so when I look at copper here, the requirement, which is what they should be eating is 10 parts per million. So if we think about the last slide, forge on copper was 8.25. So it's below than what they should be eating. Same thing for selenium. Selenium on the, those analysis was 0 0.07 and the requirement is 0.10 parts per million. So we are below what we should be. And then if we look at sulfur, uh, the requirement is only 0.15% and our forge has 0.32, which is more than the double. And the problem is, so now you, you understand why I say that copper is low, selenium is low, and sulfur is high. So this is the scenario for Florida, throughout Florida. And the problem is we have low selenium, low copper, high sulfur. The problem of having high sulfur, though it's required, is that sulfur is an antagonist to copper and selenium. And high sulfur will negatively impact the metabolism of copper and selenium. So this is a problem throughout the Florida. There's nothing much we can do. This is our forges. We just have to create a mineral strategy that we can uh, uh, manage this, this differences. Let me... 
So the requirements are the best tool we have. I'm sure that, and this is what we have to use. But one downside, downside or a limitation of the requirements is that, uh, unfortunately, the requirements do not consider cattle breed or also the environmental differences, because there's no way we can do that until today, maybe in the future, but so far it's impossible. Uh, so if we think about the cow herd in the United States, almost 45% of the cow herd on the United States, it's composed of two breed crosses. So we have two breeds for one animal. Uh, and also when we look at the Southern region of the United States, the majority of the cow herds are buzzing because influence cattle. So we have some Brahma, some Nalor influence on the, our cows here. And this is not uh, being considering uh, in the requirements, which is fine. We have to use the animal that will best thrive in our environment. And then we have to use the best tool we have to the moment to uh, plan our supplemental strategy, right? Uh, however, the topic of this talk today is looking into the differences of uh, selenium copper metabolism. So I'll bring just a little bit about of a literature review on what has been done uh, in this subject. So there's a little, there's not a lot in the literature. Uh, it's really, it has to be improved. But beginning in 1980s, Langlands using like a single herd, he showed that Bos Indicus cattle had a greater blood selenium concentration than Bos Taurus uh, cattle. In this case, they were using Brahma as Bos Indicus and as Bos Taurus, they were using Hefor and Shorthorn. Uh, also, they showed that uh, Bos Indicus using the Afrikander and Brahma had greater glutathione peroxidase activity when compared to Bos Taurus uh, cattle using the same uh, same cross. Then in 1999, uh, uh, Bas second showed that Jersey cows had greater blood selenium concentration than hosting cows uh, when they were supplemented with uh, selenium and vitamin E injections. Also in 2013, similarly to this 1999 study, uh, researchers using Mutmi, which is a uh, Trace mineral injection showed that Angus steers had greater plasma concentration than Simmental steers after receiving the injections. Then more uh, recently in 2014, this is a study that looked into copper and selenium, and the researchers found that Bos indicus cattle, at this breed that I'm not gonna even attempt to say, uh, heifers had greater selenium tissue concentration and greater plasma and liver concentration than crossbred heifers of hosting in that breed representing the Bos indicus cattle. They also uh, did some gene expression data and they saw that Bos indicus cattle had a uh, greater uh, expression of genes related to copper and genes related to uh, selenium metabolism. So the authors believe that those metabolic, metabolic differences that they found on the uh, selenium and copper status were due to uh, different regulation of those genes. Then in 1994, uh, actually now I'm moved to talk just about copper. So in 1994, uh, supplementing researchers supplementing high or low copper diets with sulfur and molybdenum. So molybdenum is another anti uh, antioxidant, no, I'm sorry, uh, antagonist for copper. So they saw that heifers, cemental heifers had greater biliary copper excretion than angus heifers. And biliary excre excretion is the main route for copper excretion in cattle and I believe in humans too. Um, then in 1995, Again, another work with antagonists. Uh, in this case, they uh, included iron. Iron is another antagonist for copper, uh, besides molybdenum and sulfur. So in this study, they show greater copper absorption for angus uh, steers than cemental steers. And then when they were not supplemented with copper, 
Angus heifers had greater plasma concentration than Simmental and Charolais heifers. Uh, then in 1996, uh, this study was looking into uh, copper concentration uh, in jersey hosting cows, and they saw this uh, that jersey cows had greater liver and plasma copper concentration than hosting cows. And this study was actually done because farmers were concerned that jersey cows were more uh, prone to uh, copper toxicity, and that was the reason they uh, start this breed study. Then in uh, 2003, uh, and I study supplementing different levels of copper and also using iron as an antagonist. They saw that steers, Angus steers, had greater copper status. So not just tissue, but serum, liver, and plasma, serial, uh, plasma seroplasmin concentrations were greater for, cemental, uh, for Angus steers than cemental steers. Then there's a study I just mentioned before uh, in 2014 using Mutmin uh, injections. Angus steers had greater plasma concentration than cemental steers uh, after the injections with Mutmin uh, trace minerals. Uh, and then more recently in 2013, um, Brian all saw that when supplementing uh, cattle with corn silage, either copper deficient or copper adequate. So in the copper deficient diet, they saw that Angus steers had greater liver and plasma copper concentration than cemental steers. However, when the diet was supplemented with adequate level, there was no differences on the uh, copper status of those animals. And then more recently in 2018, Pereira Chow showed that hosting calves had greater copper liver concentration than Galician blonde calves. And this was a feedlot study. So it was just a regular feedlot diet. And they were more concern, concerned on the inver, environmental impacts of the excretion of minerals. And they actually found that uh, there was also a breed differences when supplementing a regular feedlot diet. So I know this uh, overview of the literature was kind of long for this type of talk, but I just want to share everything because this is basically everything that has been done in the past years related to the metabolism of copper selenium. So we see that there's not a lot. So with this little overview, we can see that there is a breed differences. There's a lot of antagonists playing a role in the change of the status of those animals. And there's also sub, uh, species difference. So Bostaurus to Bos indicus, we do see differences, although this uh, was lesser ex, uh, studied on the past years. So what we don't see actually is a comparison of cattle subspecies using purebred cattle and antagonists, which makes our study very unique because that's exactly what we did. So the objective of this study was to identify potential differences in the metabolism of copper and selenium in purebred angles and Brahma cows. We hypothesized that Brahma cows will be less susceptible to copper and selenium deficient than black angus cows when supplemented with high sulfur diet. So we believe, we believe that Brahma cows would be more um, would metabolize better selenium and copper on our current scenario, which is high sulfur uh, environment, when we compare those to the Angus scouts. So just explaining a little bit how we did this study. So this was a two-year study, really intense. Thank you guys for all the help. Uh, we conducted this study in 2017 and 2018 here at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center. In each year of this study, we had eight Angus cows and eight Brahma cows. Uh, those cows were uh, individually housed and individually fed. And this study basically had three phases. So the first phase was the depletion phase where we tried to deplete the copper and selenium stores by supplementing extra sulfur. So each cow was supplemented with 50 milligrams, I'm sorry, each cow was supplemented with 
50 grams of sulfur every day. Then after the depletion phase, we had the repletion phase, which was basically to replete those animals. So we remove sulfur from the diets and we start to uh, supplement copper and selenium. We supplemented 100 milligrams of copper daily and three milligrams of selenium daily. And remembering that selenium is regulated by FDA, so we cannot supplement more than three milligrams daily. Uh, and then at calving, uh, we basically monitor those cows at calving uh, to be able to collect samples from cows and calves at partition uh, because we, we want to understand if there's a difference in transfer of nutrients from cows to calves due to breed. Okay, so just to make it a little bit easier to understand, uh, here's a timeline of the study. So every year we started uh, around April, May, and then we begin with the depletion phase that lasted to day nine of the study. Uh, on this phase, as I said, we supplemented only 50 grams of sulfur per cow per day. Then from day 90 to day 150, uh, we start the repletion phase where we supplemented 100 milligrams of copper per cow per day and three milligrams of selenium per cow per day. Then we had a little break after the repletion phase and then we brought the cows back to our facility so we could monitor calving. At calving, we collect uh, the placentas to retrieve the cotyledon to be able to measure mineral transfer and also mineral concentration on those tissues. And then right after, I'm sorry, within 24 hours after birth, we collect blood and liver biopsies from the cows and calves. And we also collect a, a sample of colostrum. Seven days after calving, we collect a, um, a sample of milk. Uh, so after seven days after calving, cows were out of the study. So very quickly on the statistical analysis, cow and calf were considerable the experimental unit for our study. Variables were tested for treatment day, year, and the possible interactions. Uh, for our repeated measures, we use day zero as a covariate. And as usual, P uh, significance was declared at P below or equal to 0 0.05. And tendencies were observed at P05 between P10, 0 0.10. Uh, so <laughs> moving to the results. Uh, just to explain my graphs, I believe all the graphs will look very similar to all the presentations. So on the y-axis, we're gonna have the variable of interest. In this case, uh, we have liver selenium concentration. And on the x-axis, we're gonna have either the day of the study, the year of the study, or the breed. In this case, we actually have the days of the study because I'm showing here a day effect that we have for this uh, variable. So as we can see here, we were able to make the cows selenium deficient. So here's the threshold for deficiency. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little red line uh, that's at 0 0.6 milligrams per kilogram. So this is the value we use to uh, determine if the cows are deficient or not. So we were able to bring them down to the deficient level on day six of the study. And then as we start to replete then they went back to the, the uh, adequate level. But this is just to show that we were able to make this, to, were able to uh, make the status of those cows to go down and also to be able to, were able to make them be selenium deficient. However, we had a treatment ear interaction. So, on the first year of the study, we didn't see any differences on the liver selenium concentration between breeds. And then when we look at the second year of the study, we actually saw differences where our Brahma cows had lower liver selenium concentration than there are Angus cows, which is not in agreement to what has been published in the literature so far. Uh, so we have to look into that more closely, but... Uh, not really what we were expecting. But then when we look at the, uh, uh, the copper liver concentration, 
Uh, again, here I'm showing the day effect uh, and a little bit different from the selenium. Here's our threshold for copper deficiency, which is 40 milligrams per kilogram. And as we can see, we were able to decrease copper status of those cows, but we were not able to get those cows in a deficient state. We never went down to the threshold line, which tells me that we are not, our depletion strategy was not effective to uh, promote this deficiency. But anyway, we were able to decrease and then to replete those animals, we just not reached the thresh threshold we wanted to. But we had also a treatment effect where our Brahma cows had greater mm -hmm. copper concentration than our Angus cows throughout the study, but we also had a treatment ear interaction. So perhaps this dif treatment difference we are seeing here is being driven by this value here. So in 2017, our Brahma cows had much greater liver selenium concentration than the other uh, measurements we have. But this is still in agreement with the literature. Uh, it has been shown that Bos indicus cattle will have a greater copper concentration than the Bos taurus cattle. Then, as I mentioned before, we collected the placentas at Kevin to be able to collect the cotyledons because cotyledons are the main uh, functional unit for transfer of nutrients. Here's a picture of those uh, tissues. Uh, so basically we got, we got the whole placenta at Kevin and then we collected five or six cotyledons, washed in and then dry to see the concentration of copper and selenium. So beginning with cop, oh, oh, I'm sorry, beginning with selenium, we did not see any treatment differences here, so basically Angus and Brahma cows had the same concentration of selenium in the cotyledon, but we did have a treatment ear effect. And basically what's, go what's going on is that in 2017, our cows had greater co selenium cotyledon concentration than the cows in 2018. Uh, then moving to copper concentration in the cotyledon, uh, we didn't see any differences. They were basically the same concentration for Angus and Brahma cows. Uh, then at Kevin, we did collect a sample of colostrum within 24 hours after birth, and no differences were observed for selenium concentration on the colostrum. The Brahma and Angus cow had exact, basically the same values. However, when we look at copper concentration, uh, our Brahma cows had greater copper colostrum concentration. And this was similar in the milk. So milk samples were collected seven days after calving. As we can see here, no differences for selenium. However, copper was greater for cow, Brahma cows than Angus cows. And here there's two things that could be happening. First one is possible that there is a differential preferential pathway for the transfer of this nutrient. Perhaps Brahma cows are more effective on transferring copper through milk than through placenta. But there's also another thing that could be happening, which is a dilution factor. Because we do not have milk production of those cows, we have no idea how much they're produce, producing. Uh, and we know that Bos Taurus, Angus cattle may produce more than the Brahma cows, this might be a possibility. That is just a dilution factor that's going on and not really a true metabolic difference, either for colostrum or for milk. So then when we look at the calves, uh, liver concentration, we collect liver samples of the calves uh, within 24 hours after birth, and we did not see any differences in selenium. However, we did see differences for copper concentration in the liver. So Brahma calves after birth had greater copper concentration in the liver than Angus calves. And again, we had a treatment ear interaction. It's actually a tendency. So our calves in 2018 tended to have or had greater copper concentration than the calves in the other years of the study. Uh, 
So I apologize, it's kind of, uh, this slide is not good. But we also look at glutathione peroxidase activity, which is another parameter for uh, selenium status. Uh, we did this uh, in red blood cells. And as we can see here, there was a day effect. And this is expected as we are changing the diet and the selenium inclusion in the diet, either adding or removing, we would see this day effect. So would either increase or decrease depending what was going on with the diet. Uh, but there was also a treatment ear inter uh, interaction where our Angus cows on the first year of the study uh, had greater GPX activity than our uh, Brahma cows throughout the years. We also look at superoxidase mutase, which is a copper containing uh, enzyme and is another uh, parameter for the copper status of those cows. And very interesting here, our Brahma cows had lower superoxidase mutase values than the Angus cows throughout the study. Uh, we also had a treatment ear effect here. And as we can see, in both ears, the Angus cows had greater superoxidase mutase activity, which is interesting because it's a, maybe there's a physiological difference that we are actually seeing here considering the liver uh, concentrations we just saw. We also look at uh, plasma seroplasmin concentration and plasma uh, seroplasmin is actually a copper containing protein that's really important uh, for the hum immune system. Uh, it's usually go up during stress and inflammation, but it's also a carrier for copper. So we, if we have more copper in the system, this will tend to go up. Uh, but as we can see here, there was a treatment effect in our Angus cows had greater uh, plasma seroplasmin than our Brahma cows. Uh, there was again a treatment ear interaction and our cows in 2018 had this uh, greater value than the other cows in the other ears. Um, Okay, and then we had the three parameters for the calves too through, uh, throughout the study. And for calves, GPX, uh, Angus calves uh, had greater GPX activity compared to our Brahma calves, but we didn't see any difference for superoxidase mutase or for plasma seroplasmin for the calves. Unfortunately, we, we only had one blood sample uh, for the calves right after birth. Uh, so perhaps if we were to follow this cast for a longer time, we would be able to see differences, but we don't have this data. So this is basically what I had to share for this study. So in some, one thing that I would like to point out before to go into a summary is that we still have gene expression data uh, for liver and for the cotyledons. Uh, we are working with 48 different genes related to copper and selenium metabolism. So they should be done either this month or next month. So I think this will be a very important piece of data that will be make us able to uh, make a better understanding of this study. But apparently there is no dif major differences on the status of selenium between Angus and Brahma cows. However, copper status was different between Angus and Brahma's cows, which is, suggests a possible difference, uh, difference in the metabolism between the two cattle subspecies. And I believe the gene expression data will help us to clarify if it, this is a true metabol metabolic difference or it's just something we, uh, we saw that's not to the point of changing the gene expression. So I also, that, I also believe that's a possible, uh, possible different preferential pathway for copper transfer as we see by the milk, colostrum, and liver in the calves. And I also believe that the uh, gene expression data on the colonies will be able to tell us if there's a difference, differential pathway or not. So with that, I'll be able, I'll be happy to take any questions you might have and um, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Any questions? Yes. So the question was, what was the normal profile of the selenium and copper in the cow bloodstream throughout pregnancy, right? They will, uh, if they're in the sufficient diet, they should be within the adequate ranges. Liver is the best indicator for selenium and copper, but usually on the last trimester, they will go down just because it's when the majority of the transfer from the cow to calf is happening. So they tend to decrease towards the end of the pregnancy. <laughs> so the question is how long I've been working this project. So this was a two year study. Uh, it was first year was in 2017, it was basically from April to December. And same thing last year, 2018 from April to December. It was quite long. <laughs> Any questions? I have a couple of questions here, I guess. Okay. So we decided to do in the first trimester initial. Uh, design of the study was to do on the first 90 days. However, on the first year of the study, we had a problem with our forges and they had much higher selenium concentration than what we were expecting. It was sad, I cried, <laughs> but they were like the double what they are used to be here in Florida and we don't know why. So because of that, we had to extend for a month. So that's why our depletion strategy was nine days long. And it, it kind of started on the first trimester and, and on the second trimester. That was just because we had this problem on the first year. So we had to repeat the same design on the second year. And the reason we choose the first trimester is just because we didn't want to affect, we didn't know what to expect in terms of Half performance, and perhaps the strategy of depletion on the second to third trimester would be more uh, cause a more negative impact in the calves. So we decide to go with the first trimester. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Should I answer? There's some questions here in the. Uh, okay, so I'll go and answer the questions on the screen. Let me see. So what were one cast question is what were the sources of supplemental copper and selenium? So we use uh, copper sulfate and sodium selenide as copper and selenium uh, supplement. What was the ingredient in, ingredient and nutri nutrient composition of the basal diet? I don't remember the composition of the diet top of my head. But regarding copper and selenium, they, they had enough copper and selenium. Uh, so that's why we decided to use the uh, antagonists to make them lower. Unfortunately, we're not able to produce a diet that was completely deplete of copper and selenium. Um, Was there a dif difference in the level of depletion and repletion between the two years? So this is a great question. And this is something I still have to look at, uh, looking at the degree of the, the, of the depletion. I haven't looked at that yet. It's in the making, I'll look into that, but I don't know yet.
how much was the variation and uh, I believe it, it's cobalt here, but I believe it's copper. So how much was the variation in copper and selenium in the grass during the experiment? So we, these cows were fed with hay. So there was basically, it was the same field and we test the, hay, the bales before feeding and they are basically constant because it's the same field. There was not a lot of variation. 